grab a chair this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team and congregation. How many of you know it's not a worship team that takes us in? It's not just the worship team that takes us in. The congregation has a huge part to play. The worship team... It's, we all we all go in. It's, there's, there's something about the assembly and a corporate uh, a corporate anointing. Well, this morning um, we're going to move announcements and some offering stuff um, at the end. Um, we want to have an opportunity to act on the word uh, this morning. I want to make this clear before we get started this morning. Um, when I say act on the word, um, this this series is not about uh, it's not about tithes and it's not about offering. Let me just settle that real quick. Um, but it is about a way of God, and um, and sometimes we we miss uh, we miss God's ways, and 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 because we're looking to in a sense pull the levers to get God to work, and um, and so that's what we're going to talk about this uh, this morning. Actually, over the next three weeks, um, uh, usually uh, every year next weekend I would be gone. On a weekend, it's one of my weekends that I would be on, and I haven't even talked to Landon about this yet, but he was going to be ministering, um, so he, here you go. I'm not. I'm going to be ministering next weekend. Um, that's usually a, a, a time where we go, and we go hunting and uh, with my kids and my family. We're just going to delay that for a couple of days, and um, here's why. Because what I'm about to share uh, over the next three weeks is probably one of the most um, fo- foundational foundational messages, uh, not only of my, of my life, I believe for this house, I believe for you, whether you're a young man or a young woman or you're an old man or an old woman, or no matter your age or your stage, if we don't get this, we get nothing. And, um, and, and, and I really believe it's something that the Lord has downloaded into me. Um, it's a story of my life from a, being, uh, from a young man. Um, shoot, I got a tattoo on my wrist of it, you know, and I'm not really a tattoo guy, right? I mean, I think it's cool and all that, but, you know, I, it's just something that's special. And it has to do with our delight, our delight, a true delight for the Lord. Um, so many times we're, we're, uh, we, we, we can fall in this place where um, the laws of God, we see, we see this as the laws of God more than, more than it is just the delight, you know, like David talked about his precepts. Oh, they're just so good to me. You know, he talks about his way, his words and his ways. Oh, they're just so special. They're so they're so good. Oh, how I delight in them, right? Um, and so, uh, uh, before uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Audible. So maybe another time. Um, just I just felt like that would be dishonoring. So. We're not going to do that. All right, uh, so let's, let's go here real quick. So get your Bibles out. Get your notepads out. Uh, put, your, uh, put your TikToks and your Instagrams away. And make sure your phone is on airplane mode. Um, and I don't say that very often, but I, I think this is something that is the reality. Um, there's nothing more rude to the Lord, not to me, to the Lord. Because that's who you're coming to hear from this morning, right? Then to be sitting with the Lord in your Bible time and be, oh, hold on, Lord, man. hold on, Lord, hold on, Lord, hold on, Lord, hold on, Lord. Now, I'm not saying you can't have your phone with you because you keep notes on that, and that's great. But I will tell you, you probably should put it on airplane mode. You know what airplane mode does? It makes it so you can't get online in any way. So the only thing you can do is take notes. You know who's not texting? Anybody. <laughs> Airplane mode. Why? Because we're going we're gonna to hear from something higher. You know? I got, I mean, you could think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go higher today. Just, like, just think of the airplane mode. When I'm going to meet with the Lord, I'm going to come up higher. This is, my, this is my moment to come up a little higher with the Lord. And just hit that, you know, just go out, you, fly, you know, and boom. And say, I'm, because the reality is, it, those things go with us everywhere, even to the bathroom. Right? I mean, think about this. How many times you hand somebody your phone to look at a picture and it was just with you in the bathroom? Just saying. I don't know how we got off on that. All right, I'll tell the story. 
So I, I was hunting for the last three days. It was really special, actually. Yeah, three days. I had uh, my, my youngest son, Caleb, with me, and my dad came down, and uh, we got to, my dad got a deer. Actually, 68 hours, he got three deer and a pig, and his buddy got two deer. So they went back home with six animals. They left Minnesota and got back with six animals, 68 hours. 12-hour drive. So do the math. They were, it was happening. Let me tell you, we were doing some skinning. Um, and he got a really cool buck with a big old drop tine, and they got a picture with three generations. Really cool, special. Anyway, and then I had uh, probably one of my, it would, if I would have killed it, it would have been my biggest buck of my life. Yesterday morning, I come in right here, and it stood right beneath me. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Come on. Oh, I already was taking pictures with this deer in my head. You know? And uh, anyway, it didn't happen. He just jumped off. I'm like, what in the world? The wind was right, and the wind switched to the east. How many of you know wind matters? Um, right? You could, that, that'll preach. But uh, anyway, and so this deer ran off. And so then last night, I was going to come home yesterday afternoon. Well, I tried to hunt last night, and you know what I saw? Cows. I was thinking cows moved in and one fawn. Anyway, so I came home without that. But on the way home... We came coming through Tulsa. I missed Chick-fil-A in Sand Springs. So I'm just giving you the details because Landon loves details. And uh, <clears throat> he, it's just inside joke a little bit there. He's like, spit it out. You know, he, when I tell a story, he's like, no, no, just tell me what happened. <laughs> and, so, um, and so sometimes, you know, it's just fun to have friends and, and, and that you just can kind of pick on a little bit. Um, Anyway, and so I, I, so I missed that one, and I remember, what, I'm giving all this extra stories. I remember growing up when my dad would, I just got hunting with my dad, done hunting with my dad, and so I had Kaylee with me in the front seat, and uh, we had eaten some snacks on the way from the hour and a half to get to Tulsa from where we had left, and so I was kind of full, you know, like, I'm like, I don't really need Chick-fil-A, and I remember this back in the day um, where my dad would eat something, and he'd have an apple, and he'd have this, and some trail mix, and then he'd say, and if you're watching, Dad, I'm just telling you, come to Jesus right here, um, and, and he'd be like, oh, we're not hungry now, we're good, we're good, we got this, and we're, I feel pretty full, don't you? I'm like, no, I want a cheeseburger, you know, and so I asked Caleb, I said, so do you want to stop by Chick-fil-A, you know, and he's, uh, he's like, I said, because when I was a kid, so I told him that, my dad would say this, and I don't want to do that to you because I always hated that. So if I know you ate a bunch, and I, ate a, I just ate a bunch, uh, and we were eating smoked salmon and sweet potato chips. You know, that's really rare combination. Uh, anyway, and so he's like, yeah, Dad, I want to go Chick-fil-A. Well, I missed the first Chick-fil-A. So we get to the next one in Broken Arrow, and he put it in the phone, and there we go. So we're in the drive through and, uh, you know, we thought we would know what we want by the time we get there, but no. So we're taking a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, the person behind us, uh, we're taking too much time, and they're kind of in a hurry. And so they're just, you know, you ever have that, you know? It's, it's big city. I just came from a, a slow week of small town, you know, just got done hunting. Just I'm taking it easy. We're rolling in. Anyway, and so uh, I thought, well, we're going to just be a blessing to this uh, person behind us. And, and so while they were behind us, I just said, well, we'll just get their meal too. And so we just paid for both, and they gave me the receipts. And then we went to the next window. Um, got, I, said, I showed them the receipts, and, and uh, the, now the lady behind us, is, she's like, oh, you know, out the window, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and so when I showed them the receipts, I said, I just go ahead and give me her meal too. I paid for it. <laughs> now, all that's true except for the end of the Chick-fil-A part. <laughs> and I didn't buy anybody's meal. But anyway, that was a fun story. Anyway, I thought that was pretty good. I heard that joke and uh, the end part of that, and I thought that was pretty fun. Don't, it pays to be nice, doesn't it? But that would be kind of mean. When, if you're going to be a turd, uh, you know, a stinker, then there you go. Anyway, all right, <laughs> let's go back to the word. How's that? Um, so Psalms 37.4, I'm going to read you two translations here, uh, 34 and 5. This is... Uh, probably NIV, delight yourself in the Lord. Maybe circle, highlight, underline, delight in your Bible. Do a word search on that sometime. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Not only will he put them there, but he'll bring them to pass. It says in this next verse, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. What a, what a, what a verse. What a verse. 
Listen to this out of the Passion Translation or the TPT. Find your delight in true and true pleasure. So there's delight. They kind of describe it there. True pleasure. Just a, what a pleasure. What a joy. It's it, uh, in Yahweh, and he will give you what, you're, what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life, and as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulls it off perfectly. This morning we're talking about, we're doing a, starting a new series called Windows of Heaven. And uh, this Windows of Heaven series, I, there's just a, an awareness that I really want uh, to, for you and me in, in, this, in this body to be, become aware of, and that is uh, something outside of ourselves and what our own hands can produce. Um, just this an awareness, you know, like Paul said, I've learned a secret. And he talked about how the Lord strengthens him. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It would be like almost like God's giving him strength. Like there's, there, or, or like when he said in the Lord, Second uh, uh, Timothy four seventeen, and the Lord stood next to me and gave me the words to minister. So he stood next to him. He strengthened me. It's almost like God is more than just uh, a figment of our imagination, or or just this thought of an idea in the sky. But truly um, present. You know, we hear this scripture, he's a very present help in time of need. He said, I'm going to go away and I'm going to send you a helper because I can't be with all of you, but I want one to be with you at all times. So there's just this, just an awareness for you and me to recognize that we have a help. We have a helper. We have the helper uh, of the Lord who the same spirit that raised him from the dead uh, lives and dwells on the inside of you. So there's just this, uh, just this awareness uh, in these next three weeks to take place of something more than just, just, you know, what you see, touch, taste, feel. Just an awareness, a true just uh, awareness, and therefore possibilities. Possibilities, because what you're aware of, you can grab a hold of how many of you know because you're aware of it now you have access to it but what you don't what you're not aware of you don't have access to it one of the jokes in Oklahoma uh, about me is that I set my phone down over there in the in this it's just a small little shop but I don't know how I lose my phone so much it's over there I set it there I said not here I said it's right outside I, I just set my phone down and so I'm like hey have you seen my phone it's time to go have you seen my phone and we don't, I don't have it all the time because the reception is really poor. And so you're not, you, don't, you, know, you don't need it. You just set it down. But because I don't know where it's at, right? I, I can't, it's, the way that I access it is I got I to gotta know, gotta know where it is. I got to be aware of where it's at. Anyway, so um, th- this morning, the title of this morning's message is Ways of Heaven. Ways of Heaven. And, and the title is not just a catchy, a catchy uh, thing that, that I try to come up with. Um, in, in these next three weeks, it's really intentional um, of teaching something that it would be a, a translate. More than int- int- introduce you to a principle, I want to really be clear that I want to introduce you to a provider. <clears throat> so I, I wrote this down. Man will always seek to manipulate a godly principle for self-gain and consumption when we miss the part of God's authority. So godly principles are, are, are ways of God, are ways of God that work, and, and they work. I mean, the world knows certain principles or laws, spiritual laws, and they put them into play for self-gain, for self-gain. And so what we're going to talk about uh, this morning, and you know, these things get abused, um, uh, James 4.3 tells us this, that, that uh, upon our own lust, like we, we want things, so we pray, we ask for things so many times because we just, we want them for ourselves. And so that, that's just where we get to. And this is how um, a lot of times things can happen. Ways that God can be abused and misrepresented, okay, um, and, and hinder others from yielding to them. So that, what we're going to talk about this morning, we're going to talk about some ways, uh, some ways of the Lord. We're going to really talk about the windows of heaven. And sometimes that, even that tagline of windows of heaven, you could tell me where that's found. It's found in Malachi chapter 3, some of y'all know, 3 verse, verse 10, which is bring your into the, and prove me now here, and says the Lord, if I will not pour out a, Blessing and see, right? There's room enough to receive. Open the windows of heaven, right? Isn't that what it says? If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out unto you such a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. This is Malachi 3.10. And anytime we, we talk about 
tithe or we talk about money uh, because, of, because of just abuse, to be quite honest, uh, in different ways. Uh, it just If you give now, right now, you'll get your miracle, right? Um, just things like that. If people get turned off. And so it's not just money that has that, has that implication um, in the church. Uh, oftentimes, money will get that where it's like, uh, get a bad taste in my mouth. And we make up ideas of what we should do or shouldn't do based on our own perception, based on past history. Um, but it's, again, it's not just money. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So some of you are like, yeah, Holy Spirit, cartwheels, right? Other people are like, if that's what the whole, I've seen enough, I, I, you're just kind of like hesitant on the whole, you know, the whole deal, or even like gifts of the Spirit, that's just like, oh, that's just kind of out there, kind of kooky, you know, the next thing we know, we'll be handling snakes, right? And so, <laughs> and it just seemed, you know, just, so because of things that are principles and ways of the Lord um, that are right, and they're righteous, can I say that? They're not just right, they're righteous, they are God's ways, they're righteous, um, we, we, can, we can stop yielding to them. Can I tell you another one? Uh, name it. Blab it, grab it. So, okay, we're going to ditch this on this side, and we're going to become some weirdos. I'm just, I confess, uh, $1 million is coming to me. And, you just some, and then you don't even tip the waitress, you know, like, I, oh, just, ugh. I'm going to drive this, but I'm going to be a complete stick in the mud. I want, I want to be increased, but my generosity is so low. Okay? You know, you just, you just watch it. How people, how do you know someone's generous? How they treat people? How do you treat people? You serve. I believe uh, the same way that, that as, as, uh, as a father, you want to raise your kids to be kings with the heart of a servant, but you also want them to become servants with the resources of a king. You know, we have this statement that we, we read every Sunday for the last, over the last year, a declaration, my life, I will not be limited in any way to serve my generation. That's kind of a different concept, isn't it? To have a bunch so that you can serve instead of so you can have a big house and have the gold watch and have the American dream. You know, what's so crazy is we, we, we work for and we, we, the American dream where God pours out dreams. Isn't that interesting? He said, I'll pour out my spirit. And he talks about, I'll pour out dreams. You know, God would like to pour a dream onto you. We were, the Bible tells us in Psalms that we were like those who dream. God has been good to us. Isn't that interesting? That God wants your my dreams, the God dream, not the American dream. He wants to pour it out. He wants to pour onto your life a dream. He wants to access to you. He wants, because of, because of what because of doing things his way, he wants to pour onto you what he desires that is a dream to you, where you would be, your life would be a picture of goodness. You are, the, you are to be the advertisement for him. You ever, I remember, um, I'm one of six kids, and I remember, you know, uh, walking in, all of us had flat tops back in the day. Four boys and two girls, and my dad had a flat top, and all four boys had flat, true flat tops. And so when we'd come into church, we'd just, you know, all in order like little ducks, you know. Um, and if you had, why? Because it, it mattered to my mom and dad that, that you know, you were clean because you were a representation of them, right. right? How many of you know if, you, if your kids just completely rolled out of bed, it kind of was like, okay, they don't got it all together today. Mama must be on a trip, <laughs> right? All right, let's keep going. Anyway, and so uh, anyway, and, so, and then other, there's other times we'll hear um, we'll hear uh, principles taught as promises, and and because principles of the word are taught as promises, we don't communicate our part. Like you have a part to play. Let me give you one. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Can I tell you that's not true? That's a principle. It's not a promise. And some of you want to claim that, but your generosity doesn't put it there. So you're going to supply your needs, and the strength of your hand is what's going to allow you. And this is why you can't give the way you would like to, because you're not putting into principle. You haven't put into play the principle of God to where a heaven's flow could come to your life. A flow, a true flow. A flow that is such a reality that it's a flow that is just like God with you. It's not just some made-up thing. It's the reality. 
We're going to look at that. But when we teach principles, right, and we teach principles as promises, well, then we'll, no longer do we even partner with that. We just nix that all together. Oh, my God shall supply all your needs according to, you know, last time I had to go get blown out and do this and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear about that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you know the time uh, you need that when you're in need is the time to sow? According to the word, okay? Again, this, this, this whole message, these whole three weeks is not about dollars, okay, at all. And, I, and that, that's why I actually hesitated um, this morning to, to do the offering uh, at the end versus the beginning. And I felt really clear and pressed in my heart. The Lord said, but are you going to teach the word and, and you give people the opportunity to practice? Are we going to be doers of the word? Or you want to just teach it after so that they don't have to be held to account? I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So, but th- th- remember this, these two, two passages. Let each one decide in his heart, in his own heart, what he is to give. Because God loves a cheerful giver, not a reluctant, but he loves a cheerful, prompt to do it giver. And then uh, he, Paul talks about this. He said, uh, I wanted to let you know in advance so that you had what you decided in your heart ready to give. Okay, so you bring you you come ready. You don't. Uh, this is why, like in on a Sunday morning, if you didn't come ready to give, then you can take a you can uh, uh, move on this word if you want, or you could just put this one on the shelf and come back let, na- another time. Because here's what I don't want to do: to starve the feeding children in Africa and try to manu- manipulate and play on emotions ever from this pulpit, from this house to get a dollar into this house. Zero, okay? Uh, and I, that's the other thing about the, the, the important, here says this in Hebrews, we're going to look at this in the com- uh, coming weeks, but here on earth, men receive tithes, okay? But they're in heaven. This is interesting, that they're in, my he- in heaven, my father receives tithes. So when I, if on in earth a man receives a tithe, an offering, but yet God receives it, then what I, it, just as the pastor of this church, what I receive is God's. And God cares about his stuff. And how we steward every dollar that comes in really, 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 really matters. Integrity. It really, really matters. And so, um, anyway, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's, let's look, go here. Psalms 103, um, 103, verse 7. It says this. It says, He made known His ways to Moses and His deeds to the people of Israel. So ways are uh, 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 really are from intimacy. Ways are from intimacy. This is the principle that you'll see if you were to kind of track back into the, into the Old Testament when, when he said, I'm going to come down and I'm going to meet with the people. And they said, no, 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 just tell us what to do. And matter of fact, give us a king, all this kind of stuff. He said, oh, I'm going to be your God. I'm going to lead you. No, give us a king. You know, this, is, this kind of this understanding that ways come from intimacy. You learn how someone thinks. That's what ways are. Like, what, like you, what one of the things around here that after being uh, pastor in here for 13 years, uh, Mona, she would say, if we're going to have an event, one of the one, of the one things uh, I don't want to have at the event to run out of. Like, just, I don't know, just me. Like, that's just, you know that. Like, I don't want to run out of food. I just think that's, that's such a, a down here mentality. And then also not being hospitable, right? I don't, that's just me. So that's just a way of Nate, right? And one of the ways of Nate would also be to tell some details, right? You just learn somebody's ways because you've been around them a little bit, right? And Landon would say, hey, uh, I, I, he texts me or emails me and say, so, hey, you text, so I thought I'd call. Anyway, that's just, that's just some of my ways, right? Um, but you learn these from the Lord. You learn, you learn them from delight. This is how Moses learned the ways of God, uh, a heart-to-heart connect. So uh, works, I, I want to just talk about works and ways this morning for just a moment before we get into this. Um, and I, I, I took some time to articulate this. Works are uh, the what was done and the way uh, it works. So works, works are what was done and the way it works. So here's what happens when I'm talking about works or ways. So many times, this is how we want God to be. We want him to be the vending machine God. We want to know how he works. We want to know, and this is how these principles, we receive principles into play, that we're right. We're talking about giving. Have you ever heard of the televangelist saying, if you give right now $100 or more, you too can, too can receive your miracle? 
right? You ever heard something like that? Abuse, abuse, right? But it's kind of true. See, the only reason it even works and they're able to go that far down that way is because there's truth in it. But it gets abused, okay? It gets abused. The only right reason some of the things, like spirit things, that, that just you know, people can say, oh, that's the Holy Spirit, but really it's moved off and it's gotten into crazy is because there's a lot of truth in it. And so people allow truth with, because how do you d- differentiate in, you know, and especially when you see because you're working a principle, right, even if it's gotten abused, it still works. Like, it still falls. Like, the law of gravity still works. Even, like, it, it, these things happen, okay? And so, again, we want, so many times we want to know how God works, and we want to do according to the works and work the works so we can get what we want, right? Vending machine God. So that's what it's like to know the works of God. That's what it looks like in Israel. This will do in the wilderness. They became getting God to move. Well, let me just do this to get God to do this. Let me just, okay, where Moses knew the ways of God. So we can have a vending machine God, or we can have a God who you live in the house with, and you have access to the pantry, you have access to the fridge, you have access to the credit card, the grub hub, and the protection of the house. And could I just tell you this? When, you're, when you think about the works of God, you're limited to clicking C13 and getting those Oreos or C11 and getting the Chips Ahoy. But can I tell you, heaven has cookies that you haven't heard of yet? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor either hand to the heart of man the things that you prepared for those that love him. So, so many times we're, we're, we're stuck on the works of God, and this is we want to work the works of God, just the works. We're going to try to pull the livers and the knobs the, and get God to move. Then we limit him on he, where he's wanting to, to go and how he's wanting to do. This is why you don't see Jesus do the exact same thing every time. Sometimes he's drawn in the sand. Sometimes he's spitting in mud. I mean, he doesn't do that for everybody. Sometimes he just tells them, pick up your mat. What is he doing? He's just doing what the ways of God, the heart. Here's how, what happens is when you're in the house, you don't just go to the vending machine and you go, ah, I really feel like those Fritos today. And you get your and you, uh, Diet Coke or whatever. You, when you're in the house, you're aware of more than just you. And so you're, you're like, Lord, what do you want for dinner today? What do, you, what do you want? This is what happens. This is what do you want? What do you want? And so when, you, when, when we live in that way with a delight to to the Lord, would you delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the, when he's your delight, you're going to be asking him, what do you want, and guess what, he'll also, we got to understand that he also provides for what he wants, this is what's so cool, he want, he provides for what he desires, and when you're in my, you're in his heart's desires become congruent, because it's your delight, all of a sudden there's a flow that you're not resourcing, yeah, got any more quarters? Shoot, the dollar thing is broke. You, you ever been there? It feels like in life it can, be, it can feel that way. All right, let's keep going here. So, 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.9. Oh, no, let's not go there. Let's go, let's go to, uh, let me give you this picture of uh, not a vending machine God, but the way that God wants it, our, our lives to work. I'm going to read uh, Psalm 16, 5 through 11, both in the, Good news translation, and then probably the NIV or whatever they have up here. All right. Um, why don't we go ahead and I'm going to read it. Uh, mm, let me read it in the good news translation first. Psalm 16, 5 through 11. You, Lord, are all I have. So this is, this is when, when we learn and we desire to know the ways of God more than just the works of God. When we, when we, when we are aware of, of him being with us, Christ, like Emmanuel, God is with us. Right when we're aware of that, here and we, we desire and we love Him, and, and we don't just try to do right, or but just gen- genuinely aware of Him. Here's what happens: You, O oh Lord, are all I have. This is the mentality of your heart. You, O Lord, O oh Lord, are all I have, and you give me all I need. My future is in Your hands. How wonderful are Your gifts to me! How good they are! I praise the Lord because You guide me, and in the night my conscience warns me. 
And I'm always aware of the Lord's presence. He's near, and nothing can shake me. And so I'm thankful and glad, and I feel completely secure, because you protect me from the power of death. I have served you faithfully, and you will not abandon me to the world of the dead. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings pleasures forevermore. Wow, there's just this mentality of just, wow, who God is. and who just, This is what it looks like to delight yourself in the Lord. Let me read the same passage out of the BSB, or NIV might be up there. It says, the Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. You're right, cup. You make my lot secure. So this is... This is a, when we, we're not just trying to get something, but we just know, let's, not vending machine, but let's be in the house, right? Let's make them the delight. And let's be aware of one who stands with us, beside us, strengthens us, uh, goes before us, who has a way and can make a way when there seems to be no way. His hand and arm is not shortened. Let's be aware of that. That this is, go back to the verse 5. Let's be aware that you alone, O Lord, are my portion. It's not my bank account. It's not my 401k. It's not that the stock market was doing good or not. You alone, O Lord, are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. Can I tell you the economy is not secure? It's never been. It's never been. And you can invest in something that's had a 20-year, what is that? When you have somebody that's the ancient of days, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 20 years, this, this investment has been go- going good. Can I tell you, 20 years is supposed to be gaining this. Can I tell you, it's not. These, these things happen. Who makes our lot secure? The Lord. Let's keep going. The boundary lines have fallen for your direction. This is, have fallen for me in pleasant places. What you say, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord, for leading me here and guarding me here and keeping me, uh, putting that thing uh, where I don't fall off that cliff. What a, what a pleasant. Uh, surely I have a delightful inheritance. Next verse. I'll praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at the night, my heart instructs me. Ah, thank you, Lord. This is one of the, one, we're going to get into this, but one of the number one ways the windows of heaven is open to you and me is through wis- is he pours out wisdom, not as the world thinks, but from heaven, to where you know what to do and how to, how to move, okay, with him. Keep going. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. This is, what, this is just the trust in I rest secure. Keep going. Because you will not abandon me in the realm of dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. There's just a safety. I'm not abandoned. I'm not left. You make known to me the path of life. Like, you ever just, what's the point of all of it? He makes known the path of life. And you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand, never changing. You're not just looking for the next vacation or the next ball game to have joy in your life or what you can't do because your money can't afford this and, and blah, blah, blah. And so you, you want, but you don't have. So why are you angry? You're angry not just with one another. You're, ang- you're trying to climb over with one another, strife and discord. You try to climb the little corporate ladder to the top. You're angry with God. Why? Because you want, but you can't get. You, why do you want? Because that's the thing that's going to satisfy instead of something that is actually satisfying, which doesn't change. And that's the Lord. And there's something that just a life and your why. Let everything you do, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, for his glory. Like my days are for his glory. Whether I'm driving a, a, a Kia Sorento from 19, I don't even know, 90, that the wheels are falling off. Or I'm driving a Tesla. It doesn't really matter. Like that, it, that's not what causes joy. It's for his glory. And, and even in my giving, can I tell you, there's people that will drive a Tesla and they're going to give $1,000. And there's people that are driving a, a, a Kia and they'll give 50 And God does not like the smell of that $1,000 gift. It stinks. What's that smell? Did you know your giving can stink? Did you know God, he wants, as a matter of fact, anybody ever gone to the bathroom, you have a spouse, maybe they've been in a house. And you're like, come on, bro, close. Somebody say it. Close the door. Turn the fan on. Okay, if you have little kids as you grow up, they learn they close the door. But you're like, close the door. Why? Because smells come through doors or windows. You smell it. Can I tell you that there's, there's smells that are coming before the Lord in giving that absolutely stink? And the Lord's like, close that door for John. Holy smokes. 
close that door. And they think that their stuff smells good. They can stand the smell of their own stuff because they compare it to somebody else. But the Lord doesn't compare you to somebody else. He knows what you have. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your hand. This is better preaching than I'm getting. And so you can stink to the Lord. Well, I thought he just loved Yeah, Yeah, but you still stink. I'm telling you, little babies, they just stink sometimes. So let's, let's go here. Let's go to Jeremiah 6.16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for ancient paths. So in other words, at a point of decision. Did you know every day you're at points of decision? Did you know he tells us he sets before us life and blessing and death and cursing? He sets God's way and then there's a way of the worlds or whatever you, whatever you want, your truth. But there is God's way and there's all these other ways. One leads to life, the other leads to death. And he says, when you add a place of decision, here's what you should do. You should ask for the ancient of days way. You should ask for an, the ancient path. You should ask for one that was ancient. Some Bibles translate that word old, olden days, or like what, what forever ago. But this word is actually uh, that which exists outside of time, ancient. Like, the, like we have the ancient of days, as, or our Lord as the name, Right? So he says, ask for the ancient past and ask where the good way is. You know, let's just take a moment and you might underline circle or make this note. What is the good way? Right now we're in the season where fall's kind of transitioning to Christmas. And I don't know what it is, but fall and Christmas time are the two times a year in our house that really candles are lit. You know what I'm talking about? And when you go to the store and you get a candle, what do you do? And, and then, whoo, smell that one. <laughs> oh, that. And some of you all like the sugar cookie sweet, like your house just smells sweet. And other of you all like, I can't handle the sweet vanilla, right? How many of you know there's, there's such a difference in candles and personalities of smells? And so you smell and you're like, this one smells. This is what you say, right? You say, this one smells good. Or you taste something and you go, is that good? You know, when you're trying things at Thanksgiving and you see that green stuff and you're like, I don't know about that. And they're putting it on the plate. But you're a guest and you're like, is that good? And so what you're doing is you're taking somebody else's word, right, and what their preference is. How many of you know that your preference might be the sugar cookie and somebody else's might be, no, or your might be cinnamon. Somebody else's, Fraser, come on, Fraser fur people. Come on. Fraser fur. Christmas, right? Christmas tree. But you might like the cinnamon. You might like the sugar cookie. And I'm like, does that smell good? And I'm like, no. It does not smell good. Sugar cookie, if you ever get me a candle, don't get me the sweet one. Give me like, I don't know, fireplace or something, you know? So here's what he's saying. Ask for the ancient path and ask which way is good to me. But ask which one I like the taste of. Ask which one that, that I like. In other words, what's my way? This is what he's saying. Ask me for the good way. Because your way, uh, we have a hundred good ways, right? Everyone has their different opinions. But can I tell you there's one way? There's one way. There's one, let me say it this way. There's one whose word matters. And it's truth. And it's what we should guide our, our, and yield our lives to. He says, and walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls. You can find rest for your souls because, because God wants your souls to be at rest. He wants your mind, your will and emotion to not have to want more and have to have this and have to have that. Can I tell you, c c contentment, godliness with contentment is the gain that everybody's looking for. But so many times we think there's, and you know, we could ask this question, then what? Right? Then what? Uh, we were uh, talking, uh, you know, talking to, we had, a, we had a youth weekend, young men, we took some deer hunting and, and important, you know, man up weekend. For, and, uh, and one of the messages um, we taught on that weekend, uh, Joe uh, Costillo uh, shared, and he asked the question about what do you guys call success to these seven kids? And pretty much every one of them, mentioned, one of them mentioned family, and the rest of them had to do with money or material. Having the big house, having the car, making, having a good job. In other words, being able to have enough. But he said, but then you've got to ask yourself this question, then what? 
Then what, right? So you get the house that you, ha- you, you always wanted to have. Then what? Well, then you, I'm going to get some land. Okay, then what? Well, then I'm going to, then what? Like, like, where's the end to that? It, there's not. It's called more. And that's the thing about lust. It's never satisfied. And can I tell you, every person that has flesh has lust. Okay. The most godly people, or who you call godly, are struggling with the same lust as you, as me. In other words, this desire for more. Some of us desire more big bucks on our wall. Some of you de- desire more vacation time. Some of you desire, you, you have a desire, right? More, anyway. So, uh, ask what the good way is. And then he says, walk in it, and you'll find rest for your souls. But you said, we're not going to walk in it. Do you ever have that? It's like, that's not the one I like. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to get the sugar cookie. The Lord's like, yeah, well, that one doesn't smell good to me. All right? So now, let's look at this. What does the Lord like? What's the candle? What's that, what's that smell? Listen, Philippians 4, 18 through 20. Philippians 4, uh, 18 through 20. Uh, actually, let's go, um, if you don't mind, let's just start at verse 10. We'll read this whole thing. Philippians 4, 10. And it says, Now I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last, this is, again, Philippians 4, 10, and we're going to read all the way through verse 20. Now I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have received your, uh, your concern for me. Um, you were indeed concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this out of need, for I have learned to be content regardless of my circumstances. I know how to live humbly, and I know how to abound. I'm accustomed uh, to any and every situation, to being filled and being hungry, to having plenty and having need. Here's the secret. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So Paul, Paul's talking to the church at Philippi and saying, hey, um, you guys, I know you wanted to give to me, but you haven't been able to give to me because we haven't been in contact, right? There's no, like, cash app. And so... He, he, what he's saying is, we haven't been in proximity, but I, I see that you are very aware of my need. But let me just tell you, I don't, I don't have need because I have plenty. But I also know, no matter if I don't have a lot or if I do have a lot, I know how to, my needs are met. And that's by God, Christ's strength. Okay? So here's what he, that's what he's saying. But then he goes on to say this. He says, nevertheless, you have done well to share in my affliction. And, and as you Phil, uh, Philippians know, in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia... No church but you. No one but you partnered with me in the matter of giving and... In the matter of giving and... Okay, this is a key. This is something that's really important. You're going to find that when you sow, you reap. These are spiritual principles and laws. And he said no one partnered in giving and receiving. We have to understand when we give, it's not subtraction. There's, there is an exchange. Okay, we're 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 gonna we're laying a principle of heaven, and if you miss some of this stuff, you're gonna you're gonna wish you didn't. Because you here's the deal, where where God ha- brings you, and, and and the word is taught, you're accountable. The coolest thing is when He gives us His way, it's for rest for our souls, so we can have joy, so we can have peace, so we can be uh, abounding in the work of the Lord. Okay, so nevertheless, he says, you've done well, well to share my afflictions. And as you Philippians know in the early days, again, when I left Macedonia, no church but you partnered with me in the matter of giving and receiving. From even while I was in Thessalonica, you provided for my needs again and again. Now that I am seeking, not that I'm seeking a gift, but I am looking for the fruit that might be credited to your account. So Paul is extremely aware of the receiving. In other words, of the sowing, the giving, and the receiving, and, and this is a, these are principles that we got to get. Matter of fact, the Bible says you, you are calling God a mocker if you would say, be, you know, that we, what you sow, you're not going to reap. Actually, he says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. What a man sows, he will reap. So he goes on to say, I've been seeking your fruit. I've been seeking your, uh, your reward. Um, let's see here. Uh, credited to your account. Verse 18. I have all that I need and more now that I have received your gifts from Aphrodite. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to me. Is that what it says? It's interesting. You're going to find that all through the Bible that when you bring a gift, God does the... 
What's that smell test? This is important because, you know, we never graduate. Like, we never graduate to, to, to just like, oh, that's good enough. We never graduate to that. God's always doing the sniff test. And he says that this, this gift that you brought, they're a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Can I tell you that smells come through windows? Can I tell you that smells come through doors? Can I tell you that giving, you'll see this principle all through the word, it opens doors. So this is a principle that has been taught and abused because it's not understanding authority, but this is a truth. This is why uh, when people give, they they open doors. We're going to look at scripture, 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 scripture of doors. And I just want to bring this understanding and this awareness of the reality of, uh, of heaven. And access to heaven and heaven, a, a heaven supply or the favor of God on your and my life. And God wants his, his people walking in uh, and walking in a place of rest. But it comes come by coming under his word. It, it, okay. And so he says this fragrant offering is acceptable. That means there's also non-acceptable offerings. Well-pleasing to God. And my God will supply. Oh, this is interesting. And now he says, and my God will supply. So God's going to supply, the smell came up or came somewhere, I don't know where it goes, it came up to the Lord, but like, there's just got to be this awareness that God is right there. He's right here. So when you call, he's very present in time of need. He is truly a help, a very present help, not only just omnipresent, but he is a very present help in time of need. When you're in need, he, he's right there. When, when you and I give, he's right there. When you and I do whatever it is, he's right there. Can I tell you, this, this, this is a big deal because when you call, you're not like trying to ring them up, phone a friend. That's, that's a long time ago. America Online. All right. Um, anyway, so I want to give you just a, a few for instances uh, this morning, and then we're going to look at three passages before we close. So the Lord stood next to me. I mentioned this one and gave me the words to minister. Okay. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We mentioned that. Uh, Philip, Philip, and he was translated to the eunuch. So I'm just talking about just this Paul's awareness and stories aware of the just like just a different dimension. Okay, and I don't want to get way off here, but I want the reality of uh, of the Lord open their eyes so that they might see that there's more with us than there are with them. All of these are passages like where they open right. Oh wow, look at all the angels, right? Wow, they were right there. Or, or how about, hey, oftentimes, make, check your hospitality because there's oftentimes you entertain angels and yet you're unaware. There used to be a Newsboy song, 24-7, right? All right, never mind. You wait for okay. Um, right, how about this? There's the, uh, it's interesting that Jesus took the baskets and he look, lifted them up to heaven, so like he's just very aware of where his help comes from. He's very aware of a source that's outside of this natural realm. You look at, you look at the, the, the widow that, that was baking a cake and she had a little bit of oil and a little bit of meal. But there was a God first moment. What, a God first. Where did that oil come from? Where did the meal come from? Where did the fish come from? When they responded to Jesus' word and said, you know, go ahead and, and let me use your boat. And then he said, now get out and cast to the deep. Can I tell you if they would have cast it to the shallow side, there wouldn't have been fish. Can I tell you it was right there, but it was they weren't in the lake. They came into the lake. They weren't there in the lake to fill just the net. Can I tell you they came from the Lord? Can I tell you that there's good gifts that, he, that come from the Lord? Can I tell you that the fish in the co- coin in the fish's mouth, it wasn't just like just swimming by. It was uh, by the Lord to bite the hook. I mean, we, we struggle to even catch a fish, let alone one with a gold coin in its mouth. It, what, he's, what he's trying to explain and, and show through all, all the word, it, it, you're seeing that there's a source outside of what you see and feel. And we got to be very aware of that. We got to be aware of, and, and even just when, when a gift and an offering was brought, that God is very aware of it, and, 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 and it would. It truly opened up, it came before the Lord. How about this one? When Solomon becomes king, and he sacrifices all these bulls, and it came up, what? It says it came up be, before the Lord. And, and he said, What would you, 
there, there's all kinds of passages where you just this very, how about Jacob's ladder? We're talking about just this awareness of just this exchange of spirit realm and natural, just an exchange. Can I tell you, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, principalities, power. I'm just bringing your my awareness, the church's awareness, to spiritual things. I'm not saying let's get all kooky, but I am saying the reality is of what you and I confess as Jesus Christ of Lord, he's not just Lord of humanity. He's Lord of cherubim and seraphim. He's Lord of creatures and headed beasts. He's Lord, he's a king of kings and a Lord of lords. And can I tell you, Bigfoot ain't got nothing on what you could, you're going to see one day. You want to talk about getting some goosebumps, walk into the deer stand. It's like we were talking, it's the one time in your life Bigfoot possibly exists. When you're walking to the deer stand in the dark, you know, I was walking this, this week and there was a skunk and I'm like, oh shoot, and it's pitch black. I don't I use the flashlight because I, I don't want to give off, you know, that's how you kill the big bucks. All right. And this skunk comes right there, and I'm in white grass, and it rears up. And then just that morning before, I had walked in, and a big pig was right there. And so I'm like, this is a piglet. And then I see it rear up. I'm like, oh, man, get by. And then he's turning towards me. I think I'm going to get sprayed anyway. All right. <laughs> and suddenly the, eye, the, the, the heavens were filled, and it says, uh, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. There's just awareness of, of just the heavens. And this is what I'm trying to get to, get to you and me. Just an awareness of the heavens. Just an awareness of, of that which exists out of si- outside of your own hand. And if you and I would come under the authority or the word of heaven, we would have access to the heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. He tells us to pray that way. He's telling us be aware of what heaven's up to or be aware of there's an order that's different than your and my natural order. Okay, now let's look at some, some passages here that, that, that bring this into play. And then when you and I understand, we're going to look at this in, next week, when we look at Matthew chapter 6 about laying for yourself up treasures in heaven, you have a part to play, like your part. He, and and, and so I hear people talk to me about... Uh, tithing or offering if that's today or that's not today and all this kind of garbage and and only people that are arguing that are those that are not generous can I tell you that and you're like oh oh ooh, I'm just telling you the truth and if you were to measure your percentage your percentage would be far lower far lower you can I tell you I'm a pastor can I tell you I see tithes and offerings I don't look at them every day, but I'll, I'll look at them and say, hey, let me see what's going on here. You, I, can, I can tell you, you're saying, are you judging? No, I'm saying, Jesus, watch the basket as the shepherd. Can I tell you, before there, there was this a larger church, can I tell you when people brought gifts, the, the, the pastor knew, hey, I guess uh, Farmer Tim, he must, he, he's always a giver, and he's not giving anymore. He's always a tither. Hey, is something going on? Let me go check on him. Hey, Tim, are, is everything okay? Uh, with our crop, we didn't come in, and, and we're just dealing with drought, and da-da-da. Hey, let, let me stand in agreement. Let me re- let's rebuke the devourer. Can I tell you that's the way it used to be? We're not talking about putting red light and green lights on the back. It's like, okay, uh, Tim has the green light because he gave today, and Bill, he didn't give today, so he has the red light. I wonder if he's going to move to green. We're not talking about that. We're talking about just an awareness that God's aware. God's aware by no means, but yet he doesn't treat us any different. But, uh, but uh, you know, like this, these things are real, okay? And so what I'm talking about this morning is, is getting you and me aware of heaven's assistance. And there re- truly is you laying for yourself up treasures in heaven. And it's not streets of gold. Can I tell you, when you get to heaven, you're not, and again, context is key here. Matthew chapter 6, right? That what he's talking, he's talking about giving. He's talking about mammon. He's not talking about, oh, let's bring treasure to heaven, people. Okay? You can't lay up for yourself, people in heaven. What are you going to do when you get there? Oh, there, I got my Ben over there. I got my, he's going to serve me in the house. Oh, I got my Joni. Oh, I got my Philip. No, you don't lay people up. He's talking about laying treasures that, up for yourself in heaven, where there's, here on earth, there's treasures that get destroyed. But in heaven, you can have access to them even here on this earth. And God can pour out. It's interesting. And you know what's crazy? 
It's amazing what heaven will pour out that, that you're giving opened to. Let's look at this. Because I, I had this, I've had people tell me, man, you're just so blessed. You're just so this. You're just so, like, you just have favor on you. Yeah, it, I do. And, I, and for, a, for a long time, I didn't really understand why, except for, and I've told this story many times as a young man, but I remember my wife giving it, her $20 that she got for her birthday. She gave five in the, in the offering, and that's, if you don't know that, quick math, that's 25%. Um, and she only had to give 10. And I was like, that's two, honey. This is back sixth and seventh grade. We, we, we liked each other all the way through middle school, high school, got married, boom, went to Bible school, and here we are, right? But she did that, and, it, it sub, and I said, well, then that, she, she gave 10%, which is two, but she gave, she gave five, not 10%. And then she goes, yeah, but I just like to double my tithe. And I said, well, that would be four. And she goes, yeah, but I just felt like I wanted to give five. And I'm like, whew, you were setting the standard high, sister. Like, I'm in eighth grade, and I'm thinking, that's a, you know, like, if I get married to this girl, we're going to have to give. You know, this is, I'm thinking that far in advance. Can I tell you, let some of these things, young men, young, young w- women, when you see certain things, nah, okay. <laughs> it's true. Oh, the Lord will change him. Okay, only if he's surrendered. All right, can I tell you, people sit here in church all the time and they aren't changed? They're just deceived. Self-deceived. Hearers, not doers. Deceived. You know, it's better to be deceived by the enemy than to be self-deceived, because at least then you know there's either hot or cold, but instead we're just lukewarm. God, these are good words. I don't know what's gotten into me today. Tell me the truth. Love me. That's what I'm doing. Acts chapter 10, 1 through 5. And there's a man named Cornelius. So this is what's amazing. Cornelius, he's the first one to ever, him and his family. Can I say that again? Him and his family are the first ones to ever receive Christ. They got, they got brought in. They got salvation came to a different family. How did it come? Let's look at this. At Caesarea, there's a man named Cornelius, a centurion it was in what was known as the Italian regiment. In other words, he's not Jewish. He and all his family were devout, but, and they were God-fearing. So he's saying that it matters how you live. It's interesting because, it, you know, like there's ditches, right? But yet it does matter. You know, it, it's like, yeah, anyway, we're not going to get off on that. So he says um, he was God-fearing, and he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear, and he says, What is it, Lord? He asked. So it's like a Bigfoot, right? I mean, oh, what is that? I don't know. What does an angel look like to you? I don't know. It made him pretty, like, wow. Tremble. Hair on the back of his neck probably stood up. And the, the angel answered, he said this, he said, your prayers and gifts. Can I tell you, these are two things, prayers and gifts. Can I tell you to pray for somebody, it takes you giving of yourself? Yeah. Praying, really? Really? Like, how much time does that take? What did, what did you pray? What, what, what did you pray? Lord, be with them? Okay. What, what did you pray? Praying, what are, you, what are we praying? Let's, we should articulate what we're praying. It would be good for us to start. This would be a good, a good start to begin to pray, at least put a scripture that you're praying over him, at least something. So it makes a little bit more due diligence because it comes up before the Lord. Can I tell you, praying, God says, close that door, turn the fan on. There are things that God hates. Excuse my spitting. There are things that God hates, absolutely detests. It smells foul to him. Because you know what it says when you say you're praying and you didn't pray? That he doesn't answer. So this is what we got a bunch of church telling the world that we have a God that doesn't answer. Because we're praying. What did you pray? Did you get on your knees? Oh, we don't do that anymore. That was just the olden days. Okay, well, it says ask for the ancient paths. Posture still matters when you're in the presence of a king. We don't know that. Not my president culture. You know, authority, well, I do whatever I want, to the teacher, to my coach, to anybody, to the police officer. 
Can I tell you the Bible does say all authority is from God? So what I'm talking about this morning is I'm talking about you and I coming back under and understanding some ancient paths and some of this awareness of God with us watching and wanting to help. And he doesn't want us eating Oreos out of the vending machine all of our life and ending up with a short-sighted, malnourished life. He wants us in the house, protected, warm, access to the pantry, to the cook, and whatever's on the stove, and, hey, I don't feel like cooking tonight. Let's get call it in. He wants us access to, to things that we haven't seen, heard, and have good things prepared for us. So the angel answered, your prayers and your, uh, and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. And it smelled good to him. And the windows of heaven were open to him. He sent him an angel. Well, this is a principle. These are principles we're, we're seeing. These are ways of God that giving opens the windows of heaven. That's what giving does. Not just to a church, but giving. Can I tell you, giving to... Uh, Jesus talks about whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done it to me. Can I tell you that your giving actually opens up heaven? The door, he, when you and I give or don't give, that we, when we're supposed to. He's like, eh, nope, yep. That's what it says. You're going to see this all through. And he tells us, open the windows of heaven. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Pour out a blessing. When, I, when, I, when you gave, he you gave church at Philippi. It came up before the Lord. It's a sweet smell. So just this awareness of windows, just this awareness of, uh, of in your and my life, favor on your and my life because of giving. And so I went, go back to Squirreled, what, the, the story about Evan and myself. And when she gave that $5, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I'm going to have to give. So I was like, I'm going to make that decision to give. It changed my life. And I tell this story, there was a revival going on. We went to a Christian school. I was a senior. She was an 11th grader. And we were, um, it was just, the presence of God was just so precious. After that morning, it was probably going into the third hour, the, uh, there was a lady that was kind of closed it down and said, okay, we're going to need to go to class. And she told me and my wife to hold hands, which at the time we weren't married. So I was like, yes, ma'am. You know? <laughs> and so, and she said, I have a word of the Lord for you. And I was like, okay, like you, we're not even married yet, but. I want to marry her, you know, and I was like, okay, this is kind of, must be the Lord, you know, or whatever, and uh, she just said this, the Lord wants you to know because you've been faithful with my money, with your money, it's like, whoa, 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 we're, I'm, I'm in 10, 12th grade, but you've been, as, can I tell you, as a young man, you can be faithful with your dollars, Amen. with your birthday money, Amen. can I tell you, this is practice, how you play? And, the, and anyway, the, the word was, and you'll never, you're never going to lack. And can I tell you, as a young man, the Lord, it was just the Lord blessing, the Lord blessing, the Lord directing, directing. The Lord was opening for me favor. It wasn't my self hand that provided it. It was God, the favor of the Lord. This went to this and to this and to this. And it's just like, wow. That's the Lord. And I never put it all together that actually I had access to something that others didn't have access to or did have access to but weren't using and there's a principle here or a way of God that he, 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 he has established forever. The altar of incense. You look at the, the there's, that comes up before the Lord. In the, and it was a picture of heaven, the heaven's heavens. When God got, or when Moses got the tabernacle from the Lord, it was the, to look just like heaven. And so the, the, there's offerings to the Lord. Can I tell you, in heaven you're not going to stop giving? Isn't that interesting to think? In heaven, you're not going to stop giving, and you know he's not going to want streets. He's going to be, he wants something that you brought from, from here. God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in their giving. Your little kid can bring you dandelions and something else, and, and you're just like, oh, because you didn't ask him. They just came in, Mom, I wanted to give this to you. And it's just like, oh, get the, get the, get the jar out, get the vase out, put them in up. And can I tell you, husbands can bring, or, or boyfriends can bring a dozen roses because everybody else is doing it, and it doesn't mean near as much. Heart matters. Okay? He says, now send men to Joppa, bring back Simon. He said to them, uh, we're well aware um, 
It's against our laws for a Jew to associate with the Gentile. But God has shown me uh, this. Oh, good. I went all the way down to verse 28. So here now Peter goes. Uh, Peter goes to them um, and brings the message of Christ. Even though it was against the custom. It was against the way. It was against the way. That's not the way it works. You ever been there? It's not the way it works. Have you ever seen somebody's life? And it's like, that's not the way it works. Well, for them it, it does. It works differently, I guess. Favor. Can I tell you, you can increase in favor with God and man. How do you increase in favor? Will you do his ways? Didn't we just read that? Jeremiah 6.16. He said, when you stand at the crossroad and ask for the good way, ask for the good way. When you do his ways, when you're, as if, if you're a son in the house and you don't obey mom and dad or the, and you don't listen to the way they ask, can I tell you, you're not growing in favor, although their love for you is extra, extravagant and never changes. But when you ask to go out to the ball game or you ask to go blah, 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 and, and you didn't ask, do what they asked, can I tell you, the answer won't be emphatically, yeah, and here's 20 bucks. Hey, what did you do here? Well, I don't know if we're going to ha- well, please, please, please. Now you might, you might get, they might have mercy. But favor changes rules. Yeah, you know what? It's okay. Yeah, be home by one. You're like, isn't there a curfew? We'll deal with that. I mean, I don't know if there's a curfew anyway. We're in a small town. In Minnesota there was. Is there one here? I don't know. All right, let's keep going. So God was moved, was moving all over for Cornelius. He moved his family. Moved, he went and got an angel, and he brought him to to him. And they said, now go to Peter and go, I'll make sure and take care of Peter. Let me just get the sheet thing and this vision into where I'm moving a man and getting him to think differently. Not so, Lord. Unclean. The sheet came down and what is, Peter met with the Lord and it's like, no, I need to go with them. So God is moving not just you, he's moving heaven. When you and I come under his word, when you and I apply just certain principles, godly ways, again, this, the title of this morning's message is Ways of Heaven, that there's ways open to you, there's doors open to you, there's not just doors uh, uh, to mankind, there's doors that were opened in heaven that were working even with mankind. Can I tell you, have you ever had this happen? I don't know why I'm doing this, but you know what, just go ahead. Oh, you know what, that might have just been something that you laid up. Can I tell you there's things that are laid up that you might not draw on for 30 years? You know that time when the Lord said, I want you to sow extravagantly here, and you don't know why, but you got that prompting in your heart, and so you do. You don't know that, that, what, 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 what that could be. You don't know. I don't know, but I do know that his ways are for, are for my soul so that I can find rest for my soul Let's look at this next passage, Acts chapter 9, 36 through 40. Now there was a, 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 at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. So this is a lady, okay, and, and which uh, by interpretation is called Dorcas. Uh, this woman was full of good works and alms and deeds which she did. So she did good works and she gave alms to the poor. And, and so that's just amazing, okay. And it came to pass in those days she was sick and she died. Wow, that's, that's not good news. She, she died, but whom, when they had washed, uh, when they had washed, they laid her uh, up in the upper chamber. So she died, and she passes away, and they lay her up in her upper room, they being the, all the people that she gave to. Look at this next verse. For as much as Lydia was uh, near to Joppa, the disciples heard, or, so anyway, this town was near to Joppa, the disciples heard that uh, Peter was there, and so they said, hey, go get Peter and, and tell him to hurry up and get here, verse 39. So Peter arose and went. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber where she was laying. And all the windows, uh, widows stood by him weeping, showing the coats and the garments that Dorcas had made. What, what was she doing? She was taking care of the widows and orphans. Her alms, was, she was taking care of people. And so now, so much so that these people are crying and weeping outside. And, and they're saying, look what she did for me. She made this coat. I didn't have a coat to stay warm, and he gave me this coat for winter, and it was getting ready for winter. I didn't have anything to eat, and they gave me this. And, and they're just, there's many people at the funeral cry, crying and telling a story of how her kindness touched their life. This is what this, this, is what this passage is. And while she, and while she uh, this is what Dorcas made for me when she was still here with me. So she, they're just brokenhearted that she's gone. But Peter put them forth, or in other words, put them out, and kneeling down and prayed and turned to him 
uh, to the body and said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened up her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Can I tell you, Dorcas's treasure influenced her outcome? Let's look at this verse. Psalms 41, 1 through 3. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. That's pretty good scripture, isn't it? Wow. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Can I tell you, deliverance comes from where? The Lord. But can I tell you, one of the ways you and I open deliverance is just in things in store that I don't know when I'm going to need to draw on it. Lay for yourself up some treasures in heaven. These are principles that have been abused, but this is the truth of the word. Look at this next verse, verse 2. The Lord will preserve him and will keep him alive. Wow, that's, that's interesting. And he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. That's, this is amazing. These are promises from, to the generous. The Lord will strengthen him upon a de- the bed of languish, and thou will make all his bed in his sickness. So you know what that means? The bed will be made, and you'll be up. God will make your bed. You know what that means? You're walking out of that bed. Can I tell you that when you and I are, when you're generous, just like you saw with Cornelius, heavens move. When you see Tabitha, the same principle. It's interesting that God put these stories in here in all these details. Generosity. But it only comes through a God first mentality. This is how it comes from a God. Your generosity and my generosity does not come unless God is first. You know, can I tell you what this year, as we come into this year, I've been praying at what we need for this house. Can I tell you, um, we're gonna, this house is getting in order. This house. Your house, we're, our house is getting in order. This house will be a house of prayer. Can I tell you, our house, not just this house, but my personal house, my home is getting in order. We're going to get some homes in order. We're going to get some things back in the right place according to the word of God. And we're going to watch when things go into order, all of a sudden, oh, it's great. We've been spinning that knob, spinning that knob, can't get the daggum thing open. No, listen, this way, this way, boom, click, click. Things, you're just going to find things click, things click, boom, boom, things. Why? Because things are in order. Why? Because we, why are they in order? Because we got the first thing first. In that God first thing, there's a supply of heaven to you and me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. This is, this is, these are good news. A God first, uh, um, a God first, first King 17. These are, I could go to so many stories where there's in the word where God is saying, this is, this is what I did because this is how I work. This is what I did because this is who I am would be a better way to say it. This is who I am. I'm a provider. This is who I am. I, you honor, honor me? He said, those who honor me, second saying, I will but those who lightly esteem me, he's talking about what you're bringing to the Lord. When you look at in Malachi, all of Malachi, well, well let's finish up here. First, uh, First Kings 17. Do not be afraid. And I'm, I'm not going to apologize for taking a little bit extra time because so many times we miss things if we don't see it in the scripture enough. And we say, oh, well, that's just... No, these are ways, if you and I will get these ways and understand the reality and the ways of heaven. In other words, ways are avenues, it's paths. You're at a dead end. You know what you need? A way. God who makes a way when there is no way. You know how you find that way? You ask him, what's your way? We're talking about one of the ways of God, that he makes a way and extends favor. He preserves lives, opens the windows of heaven, sends angels to help ministering spirits to you and me And to somebody else to make a way to give you favor to open a door so you can get that connection. And God is ordering your steps because you came under his order. Him first. Do not be afraid, Elijah, he said. Go and do it. 1 Kings 17, 13 through 16. But first, he said, this lady, she's gathering sticks. And she's going to make a cake, build a fire, make a cake, and die with her son. Severe famine. But God had a way. There was a source in famine. Because of order. But first, he says, make me a small cake of bread from what you have. He didn't say, give me all you have. He said, give me your first. This is why you, the principle of the tithe, it works for everyone. 
It's not about size. It's about the first. And you know, if I have a hundred dollars, or if I have a million dollars, God is God is giving. He it, 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 He levels the playing field. But you know, generosity. The, the, you can't. You you can. Somebody might give more than you, but no one ever has the ability to out generous you. That's up to you. That's up to you. You can. You, you might only, you might make minimum wage and only have a part-time job and you're struggling, but, but you, the Lord moves on your heart to give and to give generously and, and, and all these other dollars come in and you might give $40 to this deal and God's like, windows, open that. Well, let's, let's go back to this verse. Command his angels charge after you. Isn't it interesting that heaven commands angels to charge after you? I'm not pulling scriptures out of context here. I'm showing ways of God that we've missed and we are not aware of and we're doing the, the, the daily do, do's and deeds to be right or to do whatever and unaware of the, the, our delight for the Lord, that everything I do for His glory, that just being aware of for His glory, Lord, I want to just... Can I tell you this? This is how it is at Christmas. Some of you have little kids, and they're going to want to buy mom and dad a Christmas present. And they have no money. And so you know what you're going to do? Dad's going to take the boys shopping for mama. And he's going to give all of them 20 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever. And guess what? They're going to wrap it, and it's going to say, Mama, look what I got you. Can I tell you? They got it, but I provided it. Can I tell you, even when you and I bring a gift back to the Lord, you're bringing it to him, but he provided, but he provided it. I get, if I don't see that, here's what I don't see. I, don't, I will not see the doors. If I don't see that, I will not see the windows. I won't see the windows. I won't be aware. I won't be yielded. Hey, send, send for somebody. Hey, okay, let's keep going here. So he said, don't be afraid afterward, make some for yourself and your son. That's verse 13. Verse 14, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be exhausted, the jug of oil will not run dry until the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she went and did according to the word of Elijah, or the word of the Lord, and there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her household. The jar of the flour was not exhausted, and the jar of the oil did not run dry, according to the word of the Lord had spoken through Elijah. Proverbs chapter 11, 24. One gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds what is right and only becomes poor. Wow. These, these are principles. No, these are, these are principles that come from the ways of our Father. If you and I will find out what He says and, and just say, Lord, I want, and understand that His ways are always about rest for our souls. This is the closing scripture is this. Matthew chapter 3, 10 and 11. All of this passage, not just this passage, all of this book is about the lack of honor in the house by the priest and the people. People are bringing and priests are accepting. So there's two things. People are bringing and priests are accepting gifts to the Lord that are so yuck that they wouldn't even bring them to a friend or a mayor or somebody in the city because they, then they'd be viewed as like, oh, you know, bad. And God's like, where's the honor Do my name? Where, 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 where what's, what's going on here? You're robbing me. It's interesting. He uses this terminology. He talks about robbing him. How can he rob? Because he's the one that provided it. It was his. This is how you rob. And he said, not just in tithes, but tithes and offerings. When he directs something, when he directs you as a child of God in your heart to do something and you don't do it, you're robbing from God. When you are supposed to sow into somebody at the grocery store and you get that and you reach in there and you see that there's a five and uh, there's a 20 and you're like, oh, I wasn't planning on giving that 20 because I was going to use that. And the Lord's like, give the 20. And you're like, hey, here's five bucks. I just want to tell you God loves you. No, you don't. You want to tell you that God doesn't think enough of you. He thinks he loves me. <laughs> Can I tell you he's sniffing that? This matters. Can I tell you what I'm not talking about is only bringing tithes and, and offerings here? Can I tell you where your tithes go? And your, the tithe, but can I tell you about alms and all of those kind of things? We 
When, I get, when, it, when get, tithes are given, they're not given to, to a man. Here on earth, they're given to the Lord. This is what we've got to understand. He receives them in heaven. He receives them in heaven. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, the Bible says, Malachi chapter 3, that there may be food in my house. Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. It's interesting that he throws out the Lord of hosts. It's interesting that what we've read about is windows of heaven. It's interesting we talked about how he commands his angels charge over you. It, it's interesting that God sent angels to, to Cornelius' house and moved heaven visions to Peter. Can I tell you, we've been doing things far too long alone and we need to become more aware of the way of heaven and that we, have, we, have, we can call on heaven. We should be calling on heaven. I see the sign on the way to, uh, uh, on Georgia Ridge. I've seen it a couple times uh, on the way out. It says, uh, appeal to heaven, it still works. You've probably seen it, it's on Georgia Ridge. Uh, I don't know who put that sign out there, but I thought that's good because it's right. Appeal to, like talking about just praying. But can I tell you, the heavens, the Lord, he's listening. He's watching over his word to perform it. Can I tell you, every prayer, there's prayers that you're praying that are stored up, that'll be poured out because he needs a little bit more to move some things. Don't, thank you, Lord. Try me now, here says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven or avenues, exchange, how many things are exchanged through a drive through window? I mean, we do windows all windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. This message would be a wrong conclusion if, if you heard this, that you can manipulate God by your giving. You'd hear this wrong if you heard today that you can manipulate God by your giving. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about ways. I'm talking about a way of heaven that you and I, if we could become aware of, that when you and I, when the Lord directs our giving, He directs us to give already. But when He directs us and we're out, He's directing and He's telling us, store something up there. You're going to need some favor here. You're going to you're say, wait, is this works? Is this works? No. Show me your faith. And I'll show you my works. Because faith without works is dead. If you say you believe something, but you don't have works to back it up, you don't believe it, and you're self-deceived. I have so many people sit and argue the, the fact about grace or faith or faith. Can I tell you, it is by works? Whoa. You want, you want to quote Ephesians instead of the brother of Jesus. And you're only quoting that one verse. What about the other ones? So we quote, by grace you are saved, not of works, so lest any man should boast. By grace through faith. Yes, but faith, if it doesn't have works, is dead. So if you, you don't have faith if there's not some works. That's what I'm saying. Faith without corresponding action is dead. So you can't apply that verse if you don't have faith. So you're not saved by your works, but you have faith by your works. Because it's the proof of what you believe. We tell people we have faith. Don't, don't tell me about my faith. Faith is personal. No, it's not. It's evident. Faith, faith is evident. If you have faith, you're going to see it. That's what the Word of God says. And so we, we're, we're lying to ourselves and we're talking about, what I'm talking about is I'm telling the truth this morning and you're, I'm lying to you if I tell you it's okay when it's not and you, your bank account of heaven is bankrupt and you have nothing to draw on. You have the mercy of God, which I'm thankful for. But he tells us that you have a part. Jesus tells us this. You have a part to play. He says, lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. Don't serve mammon. You tell mammon what to do. You tell mammon what to do. It's been telling you what to do far too long. You draw a line in the sand, you get some things in order, and you say, as for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. And that means whatever the Lord says do, that's what we're doing. This is the word. And you know, you could sit here and sit here and sit here, but you got to find out, because here's the deal. It's not just for you, it's for your children. 
And you have people that go, you, you, you're going to get to church when you got your little kids because I want them to follow the Lord. Can I tell you, if you're in the house and you brought your kids to church to follow the Lord, but you're not following him even while you're in the house, they will not follow the Lord. I don't know why this is such a straightforward, corrective, in part, open the door. You know why? Because God loves us. Amen. You know, th- this message, when I, we had this weekend, we had a weekend and I taught these kids these three different messages, four things I could tell you if I could pack your bags before you become a man or as you become a man, 16-year-olds. We had seven 16-year-olds that we took hunting and we gave them these books and, 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 and it was just a special thing for me. Like I wanna, I wanna begin to impart more into the next generation. This house will be known for how it raises families people to follow the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's, we got to be intentional about this. And the Lord's been dealing with me on getting the house in order. And it takes time to get things in, in order. But anyway, it, one of the messages was taught by Joe Costillo. Um, and, and there's different voices. And there were some corrective voices. And there was a tone at one point that I was like, golly, straight up. And he even apologized, said, I'm sorry if I sounded forceful on that, you know. Because he told the boys, I'm not picking up any more of your water bottles. And I'm not, ma- you make your bed and you pick up this. And he told them, like, there was no, I'm done. I'm not your mom. And this is disrespect for this man's house. And some of you remember that. Who was there? Who was there? Samuel was there. That, did that mark you a little bit? It's kind of like, wake, wake up. Because someone spoke because they loved you. That's what, and, and so it broke through some, can I tell you we didn't pick up any more water bottles? Can I tell you there was a young man that said, thank you for telling me that. I wasn't really thinking about that. You, and they, they stepped into something else. So the wrong conclusion, if you think you can manipulate God by your giving, or if I'm trying to manipulate you from your, for giving. That's why I hesitated to even receive an offering toward, at the end because I'm not, I don't want to, we're going to receive today's offering uh, towards a purpose, actually. Um, ties to the house, but an offering towards a purpose, okay? Because I don't want, I don't want to be able to have any manipulation in this game. I don't want you to be at, remotely feel that. Because your tithe is a set standard. It's the same for everybody. It is 10%, okay? <clears throat> Yet the truth remains that our generosity keeps the door open. So, again, the wrong conclusion could be that I could manipulate God in the giving, yet the truth remains that our generosity keeps the windows of heaven open. I will never tap the fullness of God or that which he intends for me apart from generosity because I will be living in a natural but very much a spirit realm, spirit world. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but again, and you'll be doing it all naturally. This is the truth. This is a principle of, open, of how God, how our generosity truly does open doors. You and I can lay up treasures in heaven. When I give, I'm giving unto the Lord. When I bring a tithe, I'm giving it to the Lord. When I give to the prisoner, I'm giving it to the Lord. When I give to somebody a cold drink of water, I'm giving it to the Lord. Whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done it to me. He said, this is what true religion looks like. This is what it looks like to really take care of the widows. Take care of the orphans. Give them your best. Don't give them your old shoes. Give them something that's nice. Give them something that you would want to have. That's how you know if it's nice. Would you, would you want to get that? When you go, if somebody needs a meal and you get yourself the number one supersize with the Coke and you get them a $2 double cheeseburgers, two, how about you get them the number one supersize with the Coke because that's what you get for you. So how about you, we put them in the same place and how about I get the two cheeseburgers today? Can I tell you what the Lord says? Find a way. I'm going to find a way. Can I tell you we do that with our children? I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way to bless them. I'm going to find a way. Because they, they moved out of their heart. And God looks at the heart. God looks at your will. Seed has been given to you and me to multiply in our lives. The only thing that keeps seed from multiplying is our will. God gives seed to the sower and bread for the eater. But God's the one that causes it to grow. 
The only thing that limits seed from growing in our lives is our will. God causes the seeds to grow. So anyway, um, we're going to receive tithes and offerings this morning and do a couple announcements. Um, you can, we're, we, do, we do most of our giving online anymore, so uh, we're, we will pass the buckets here um, as well. Ev, you want to come? We have a Christmas outreach that we're going to be talking about, and I, I'm, we're going to raise this money over the next three weeks. I had a goal to raise, um, but I couldn't get a, a true number. Uh, and so while we were up in staff meeting, we were like, okay, we're trying to weigh it out, weigh it out, weigh it out. Uh, I have a goal of $25,000. That's what the goal is. But we're going to do it for three weeks, and whatever comes in, that's what's going to be sowed. So uh, we're going we're gonna to hit that goal and then some, okay? Um, but here's what we're doing. Uh, there's a few announcements. I, I love this graphic. Isn't that cool? Good to give Austin a hand. That's sweet. Pastor Austin. Okay, cool. so if we can put up that graphic, that'd be great. Um, so like Pastor Nate talked about, we have an opportunity this time of year, and he really hit the verses that I was going to hit. Um, but really, this comes from just um, doing what the Word says. Yep. And the Word tells us um, to be generous. And I think especially this time of year, what an opportunity that we have as a church body. And just saying, we have an amazing, generous church. Amen. It's awesome to see. Absolutely. Um, so for our Christmas outreaches, this is what we're doing this year. Um, we will be doing Angel Tree again. So if you go into the children's lobby, you'll see a big tree there. And um, we have um, angels on the tree. So what that is, is our local DHS has contacted us, which this is a testimony of the, just the generosity and love um, just yep. for our community because they contact us every year because of how awesome and how over and above we go so for D these kids. So DHS, Department of Human Services, in other words, all the foster care kids of Crawford County, uh, even those that are some outside of Crawford County, um, but all, every kid that is in foster care in Crawford County uh, this these this house is going to take care of. Yep. So we're going to, I think there's like 67 right now. Maybe there'll be a few more coming in. Yep. Um, but yeah. So um, make sure that you do not take an angel off the tree if you do not personally talk. So every service will have um, someone there that will be working. And just make sure that you let them know the angel that you're taking, check in with them because we can't have angels taken that we don't know about and are keeping track of because, again, that represents a child. And so we want to make sure that we don't overlook any of those. And the graphic that's up there is uh, not communicating what she's talking about. This graphic right here talks about our Christmas outreaches. We are doing angel tree and and Christmas outreach. So we are doing, as an angel tree, this is the individuals where you and I get to go take our kids and we get to show them what it looks like. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you can grab an angel and you can pray. We're going to pray over those angels. You're going to find out what you're to get them. And then we're going to write uh, in some cards uh, what the Lord is saying to those kids. You know, it, this is be practice. Which one? You know, you go there and you go, do you think he wants the blue ball or the red ball? I don't know. He said he wanted a ball. Okay. Which one? Which one? Check your heart. We, we, we pick out things for your kids. We pick out these things for these kids. Can I tell you the same way that you discern? And you don't say, you check not just which one you like. Can I say that the same way? You, what, what do you want to say to this little guy? What do you want to say to this teenage girl? What do you want to say? And we're going to write those things. So if you take an angel, you're also committing, and the Lord will give you words of encouragement, words from the Lord to write in that card. They're going to go along with these gifts. So... Yep, so this is separate. Like he said, it's still outreach that we're doing, but it's separate from the money that we're raising. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So Angel Tree, you can go participate in that. And our goal is to have all those angels taken Amen. and just over and above blessing to them. And then the gifts need to be returned unwrapped by December 13th, okay, which is a Wednesday night. Okay, and then for our outreach, which is what he talked about, what we'll, we'll, we'll be doing is our goal, like he said, over the next three weeks is to raise $25,000. And what that is, is it's going to bless. We're going to be able to visit um, the jail, the Crawford County Jail, like we did last year. I know a lot of you participated in that. So we're going to be able to bless them with just supplies that they need, um, phone 
minutes so that they can call family. We had so many last year who were just so appreciative for minutes to be able to call loved ones. Um, and this is an awesome opportunity, not just to sow into, but to also we get to go visit them. And that's one thing that the word tells us is that you visited me when I was in prison, when I was in jail. And so this is an awesome opportunity to not just sow financially, but also like he talked about, put hands and feet to it and go and participate. So be looking for the date for that. We're still working with the um, jail on that, but we'll be able to. Um, and can I say there. this? So many times when we go to jail, um, sometimes we can go into that place and then we go this, oh, they need Jesus. Um, we, we need Jesus. We need Jesus. Can I say tell you the main reason we go to jail is to visit, not to preach? The main reason we go to jail is just to love them, yeah. not to preach. We'll share the mess. Pray. Is there anything we can pray with you about? Yeah, absolutely. But can I tell you the heart is not, here's what I know, here's a gift, let me tell you now what I know. Can I just tell you, God loves you, you know? So this is a, these are important things. These are important, what, important for you and I to know about just sharing our faith. That's right. Okay, and then next we have blessing baskets. Um, so we're going to put together some um, awesome baskets for the elderly and or disabled residents of the Alma Housing Authority. We have a contact there, so we're going to be able to bless them, deliver those baskets. And so you'll be seeing more about this, but Wednesday, December 13th, um, the children's classrooms are going to have their Christmas parties, but we're going to be putting all of these baskets together the items for the jail and all of that together so you can plan to attend that. The youth will be in here as well for that. Um, and so, again, $25,000, and that will give us the opportunity to bless and yes. to just put into action. And then also um, something that we were uh, talking about, we're going to make some extra baskets as well. And um, the way that we're going to, if there's somebody in the house or someone that you know, um, that you would like to be the hands and feet, or even you would say in your own self, Pastor, um, we're really struggling. We could use a, use a hand. Um, I would ask that you would see me or Pastor Landon, um, and we will uh, take your name and we'll put you down for one of those baskets, and we will be the, uh, how do I say, discreet delivery, in a sense, uh, to get that to you. Uh, I believe that God loves, and he also cares about our, I, want, I don't want to say pride, but just, you know, uh, those kind of things. So just to love on you, uh, we want to be a blessing in that way. So again, if you know someone that you're saying, I really want to be a blessing in that way, and I want to use the church, not just my own hands to do it, it you know, in addition, um, we would love, we'd love to go ahead and come to Pastor Landon or myself, and we'll take your name, and when those get delivered, we will let you know, okay? So, all right, that's it. So we're going to give this morning, and we're going to uh, go ahead and put the offering declaration up there. And this is what we're talking about. And again, this whole this whole this whole series is truly about. You're going to see the next week and then next week why it's so important. I'm going to, I'll just take you to the week three. It's so important for us to understand about access or windows of heaven because the blessing, the empowerment to prosper, that that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the people of God, the children of God, nations recognize the blessing upon a people. And the blessing was declared through words, and words are spirit. I'm telling you, these, these, we're talking about, what we're talking about, we're talking about the ways of God, and you and I understanding and submitted to and coming underneath God's ways, under what, which way he says, and knowing that when I come under that, the blessing is truly at work in my life, and not only in my life, but I can impart to my children something that I don't have. Because what I, what I do have, I give to you. I don't, silver and gold, I don't have. What I do have, I give to you. And so, uh, anyway, let's say, uh, I guess, yeah, let's stand this morning. So, giving declaration. So, this is what we're talking about. Let's, just, let's say this together. Father, today, we pause to reflect and say thank you. We recognize you as the source of every good gift in our lives. Right now, we come into agreement with you, and we say, in this house and in my house, there is provision for your vision. In no way will we be limited to serve our generation. We purpose to be an extension of your goodness so others would experience you. 
Right now, we ask you for wisdom and to direct our steps into a place of overflow. Our lives will bring increase to your kingdom in Jesus' name. Father, we take these tithes and these offerings, uh, the, those that are uh, yet to be sowed. We, we bring them to you. We commit them to your work, to your service. Father, thank you for many, many, many lives being touched for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go ahead and sow. Thank you, Lord.